Hey, it's Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop, and thanks for tuning in. This is part one of the Stoned Hoods in Crooks by Von Franco Model Build. So I've had this model for probably about five years. I don't remember where I got it. This has been one of those projects that I've been wanting to do, but I haven't had the time or the energy to really get into it. Uh, in any model, to be honest with you. I keep buying them, and then I never do them. So, as you can see, I've unboxed it. I've taken everything out. Um, for the most part, uh, very, very well done. I mean, it's not a very um, detailed model. Uh, there's some mold lines that I'm pointing out right now that I'll mark off and sand in a few minutes. It's, um, considering it's been out for quite some time, the mold lines and flashing really was... Uh, minimal as far as I'm concerned. I expect that a lot worse even by Good standards. It's probably mediocre at best, but for the you can see right there on the wheels uh, All the parting lines and everything so um, Overall, I mean, it's not a ton of pieces. There's you know four sprues five sprues in the model itself uh, There's no chrome pieces. There's no glass uh, There's really nothing to this uh, but I love the style of these models. Um, I was heavily influenced as a kid and had the pleasure of meeting um, and actually having dinner with Ed Roth um, some of the other famous 60s customizers, Gene Winfield um, you know George Barris came to our speed shop when we had that um, but Ed Roth was always my favorite and that style uh, really really kind of put a big influence on me when I was a kid growing up and I like the 60s culture and, and, and everything and uh, this model by Von Franco is 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 pretty much indicative of, of that so here you can see I'm using a black sharpie uh, just to mark off all the mold lines so that when I sand down once the black marker disappears I know I've gone far enough um, but again there's only you know three or four uh, heavier lines that need to be sanded down and considering how old it is I'm I was pretty pleased with it. So I'm going to use the uh, Tam Tamiya, Tamiya, Tamiya <laughs> um, sanding blocks. I got 600, 400. I think I start with with six here. Um, took a little longer than I wanted, so I ended up jumping to four and then six to smooth it out um, and also scuff the model. I'm using a um, a fine blade here to a panel line marker to or scribe, whatever you want to call it, to you know, put a little bit more of a, a, a pronouncement on all the, the doors and the trunk and any place that has a, a separation for what's supposed to be. I just don't want it to get filled in with paint because I'm going to be priming this and then putting quite a few layers of paint on it. So, um, but tires, there's no backings to them. There's just a tire and then there's a, a hubcap that, that's going to go in it that I'm going to paint. And this being the first episode, part one, I broke it up into two because it's going to be, um, I'm going to try to go into a little bit more detail on the painting part of it. Um, I do a little bit in this video, but um, as of me recording this video, I actually haven't even painted um, the body yet. So um, I just know I'm going to go into, I want to go into a little bit more detail on that. So I'm kind of just breezing through um, the basics of what this model is. There's, again, not a lot to it, so it's a fairly short video, eight and a half, nine minutes, something like that. So, um, you know, the wheels, obviously, after you cut the sprues, make sure you sand everything down. I'm scuffing it up so it'll accept the primer. I'm using a 600 right here. And by no way, shape, or form am I an expert on building models. I haven't built a model since I was, oh, uh, I don't know, in high school maybe. Um, and I'm 52, so it's been a while since I built a model. Um, but it's something I've just been wanting to do. I enjoyed it very much as a kid, and I have the luxury of being able to do it now and actually recording it and showing it, and it's just something I've been wanting to do. So I figured this was a fairly easy model, and it's a good starting base. I've got a bunch of other ones that I'm going to do on the channel as well. Um, and as you know, I'm not just a die-cast channel anymore. I'm going to be doing models. Um, Hell, last week I went and fought killer robots in Connecticut, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to try to put some some footage together from from their uh, live feed and do that. So that was fun. I'm going back in May. I had so much fun. Not enough to be able to build one because I don't have the uh, the chops to 
uh, engineer or something, but being able to drive somebody else's was pretty fun. So, but anyways, I'm putting the uh, the engine together. It's only a few pieces. You get the block, uh, which has the blower on the top and then the exhaust, then the um, fan belt, which is part of the radiator, and then you put the heads on with the valve covers, and then the scoop is two pieces. You glue that together. That'll fit right on top. The arms you have to assemble, so the fingers are all separate on the the right arm, the one that sticks out the window that holds the shifter. Uh, so you have to to glue those in. Pretty simple. They're they're pinned, so it's very simple to figure out. Obviously, if you put it on upside down, it'll look like a broken finger. So I don't think I have to go into that. Um, the only thing I don't like about that is it leaves a lot of lines because it fits, but it's not super super snug so you can see some gappage i try to fill it in um after it all dried with the regular uh, cement that i'm using here which is a real fine cement i tried to go back over it with um, some regular regular glue just to help fill in so i could sand it down um, but there's there's a decent amount of sanding on all the parting lines for uh, the exhaust for example is two pieces um uh, I end up having to go back over it with body filler. So the other thing I wanted to do is I didn't like this chain. It just kind of hangs there. It just goes right into his arm. I thought that was kind of silly. So I'm going to grind that down. And then I've got some Citadel skulls, if you look at the upper right, um, that I'm going to be, I'll probably put on as like a charm or something on his actual bracelet. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. I'm either going to do that or make him like a ring or I, I don't know. But either way, I knew the chain had to go. So I'm just taking my time, going real slow taking it down as far as I can with my Dremel tool, and then I'll, I'll use a file and, and then sand the uh, whatever is left, which wasn't much. You just have to be careful. Uh, I get this about half speed, and uh, it's pretty thick plastic, so um, it, it's, it's put together well. Um, but overall, you know, everybody has their own preferences. I didn't like the chain. I just thought it was silly. Um, you know, hell, I'm not even sure. Maybe I'll just actually put a piece of chain on it, you know, going inside the car or something. I'm not sure. But right now I'm looking at these skulls, and that's kind of where I'm at, kind of looking to see how it's going to work. And this is that glazing putty I was talking about. This stuff's all right. Um, I've had this forever, so it's probably expired for all I know. I don't know if that crap even expires, but <laughs> it doesn't go on like it used to. And I'm just kind of using a piece of plastic or cardboard to, to smooth it out. I try to do this on the stuff that's going to be visible. And here I started painting everything. The only thing I haven't painted as of this shot is the actual body itself uh, because I needed to mix some paint. Uh, I got the tires done. I got everything else in white and the things that are supposed to be in black in black. I used the Citadel Corax white only because I had it and it was just simple to spray all that with a spray can. Same thing on the black. I used this, uh, this Surfacer 1500 by Mr. Finishing. Stuff looks awesome. That's exactly how it looks. And as a matter of fact, I'm not even going to touch it after that. That stuff works awesome. Gives it a nice sheen. I'm using the Autoborn White Sealer because I'm going to be going with all Createx paints for the body. I believe I'm going to be going with silver and then a candy orange to be similar to the box, but be a little bit different. And I'm probably not going to put the decals on it anyways. Then for the body itself, I'm using, um, I'm going to throw this crap in my airbrush. When I say crap, I'm sorry. It's not crap. It's good stuff. The game color, um, orc green, and then and this other uh, lever green, whatever it is. Uh, it's a nice contrast. So uh, stay tuned. Part two will be coming up. And thank you for watching.